Oh yes! What a day! What a day! There's actually a nice bit of breeze in the air as well, just to uh, cool the knackers down in full high-vis gear. <laughs> I haven't actually worn this suit in a long time. I thought I'd give it some airings. Mainly because it's a little bit too small. So sort of knee down, bent over sports bike antics. It doesn't really suit the suit very well. <laughs> what a thing. Right, let's find a little place to stop. Is that the thumbnail? I think that could be the thumbnail. Let's go a bit closer. So I guess this is the last time you saw this bike. It wasn't really a review. It was just me talking about stuff and just generally being a bell end. So this is a bit more of a review. The first, you know, 350 miles I've done on it and just picking up maybe some little nuances between this one and the older one, because I had a 2014 Super Duke R. So last time you saw it, it was bog stock out of the showroom, apart from that little pipework slip on, I think. So in the meantime, the power parts rear sets, um, they're definitely a lot higher. Literally, this is the first time I'm riding on them. And it feels instantly a bit more racy with those higher pegs. It's a bit of a you know, I'm a lanky bastard. I can go down, to be fair. There is another hole lower around the back door. But I'll get used to it just being high. Uh, I finally got rid of the tail. So this is a brand new uh, tail tidy from KTM. Again, the Power Parts tail tidy. Which was fairly easy to fit. Let me just uh, move it out of the way for this young lady. And bearded man. Oh my god, I've fallen down a hole. I was lucky. Oh, <laughs> little, uh, it was all an excuse to show off the uh, flashy KTM Supertech R's from Alpine Stars and my general fluorescentness. Well, well, yeah, so we've got the Power Parts Comfort Seat and Pillion Seat. Still running this Pipeworks exhaust. Now, I need to get, I haven't decided about the Akropovic full system yet because it's a lot of money. A lot of money. And to be fair, this costs about 200 quid, this little slip-on. And it sounds pretty bloody good. And you don't have to have a hanger here, which I like. So you can see that full area. Um, I've got some power parts. Uh, crash fucking things, whatever they're called. Guard things. This is not a power part part. This is off the old bike. This is a race fox part, and this is the old faded sticker kit, which that's what happens to high-vis colours in daylight, by the way. After a while, they go all milky. Oh, and I put these little hand guards on. Mainly, I mean, I'm not... These things are designed. This is there, really, just if you're racing and you don't want to get tangled up and something else to apply the brake when you're battling for turn one. It's not going to happen on this, but I think it looks really cool. I had them on the last bike. I took them off because I did a lot of filtering. And I would freak out going past lorries and stuff that have the straps and the uh, sort of, don't know you call it, canvas sidewall lorries with those things. I just didn't want to get it stuck and just whip the bars. So, But I'm not doing a lot of filtering these days. So I thought I'd put them back on because they do look cool. Mirrors are still the same at the moment. I don't know if I'll just get any other ones or if I'll just take them off or if I'll just leave them. haven't really decided yet. Little ram mount ball, got the old camera on there. Hopefully we'll get some nice shots of that. And then just little tarty things like this little frame bung. Is that all? Is that what I've done in it so far? I think that's it. And just cleaned it and waxed it. In fact, the very first thing I did when it was brand new paint was gave it a fair few coats of wax just to try and protect that initially. So rather than getting dirt and shit on it. Another thing worth noting on the older bike the 2014 this um whole unit here this whole bit of bulk can you see all that in there 
literally just runs those two tape cables to this flapper, which down there, I don't know if you can see down that hole, probably not, there's a little butterfly, but I've never seen it closed, so I don't know when it closes, but anyway, that can probably be, probably be junked at some point, because that's quite a bulky unit, and the old one, this is Euro 4 again, the old one doesn't have it, and just some little mushrooms on the front there, just to stop it going down, well, not to stop it going down, if it does go down, uh, it protects the bottom of the fork leg, and that's about it, so why don't we go for a ride, yeah? Yeah, and this beautiful, this is like a kind of French vineyard. It's uh, absolutely stunning. Let's just make sure we've got enough uh, enough thumbnail viewage. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, ding, ding. Because it's all about them thumbnails, yo. Of course it is. Thumbnails and capital letters. That's all you've got to do. Start a YouTube channel. You don't even have to have any decent content. Just write ridiculous stuff in the title and shit will happen. Okay, if by the way when these cameras flick, this is still the older um, Drift Ghost, which only does 1080p, that is recording at 270k, 2.7k, um, so that will automatically be nicer quality. I did actually do a vlog on the new Drift 4k, that's coming soon, that's on the Ducati 1299 Superleggera, which um, was a pretty intense day or two because it took fucking forever and we kept fucking up the cameras and uh, microphones and all sorts of stuff we actually had to record that roundup that you may have seen on 44 teeth there's a full review on it there that that roundup when we were sat in the chairs that was the fourth time of recording it fourth time it took three days three fucking days because we kept like getting the audio wrong it wasn't good enough and we know how much you like decent audio so Yes, hopefully that was taken care of. Oh, it, I mean, this sounds good. I know you can't hear because of the microphone, but it's it's good enough. It's a perfect level of nice noise minus irritation. But I would like to get rid of that cat box because it is very heavy and bulky. Bulky! So this bike, the 2017, in its current form, this one here, does ha has none of the special track packs, quick shifters, any of the extra stuff that you that you buy from KTM. Ugh. And I initially I was like, oh god, boring. But actually, I'm quite happy it's like this because I get a chance to experience what the stock one is like and then what it's like with all the extra stuff. So this is going to be my bike for a while and I'm quite happy just sort of tinkering and, and evolving, doing something over a bit of a period of time, because sometimes when you do something all at once and modify loads of shit, you don't know where you are, you get a bit lost, and you think, oh, well, the bike's doing this now, but what part was that? Was that the wheels? Was that the brakes? Was that this? Was that that? So it's quite nice to do it in a progression. Monday, I am going to pick up a Super Adventure R from them, because we're doing a feature on 44 Teeth, and it's going to be a bloody funny feature as well with that and another bike. So I'm dropping this off at KTM UK and they're going to plug it in and they're going to put all the jizzy shit on it internally for me. Not any exhaust and shit yet, just unlock all the stuff, which is very nice of them. So I will be able to tell you the differences. Now, I digress somewhat on there because what I was about to say was that actually this, it's quite nice having a manual experience. Absolutely, I prefer a quick shifter, don't get me wrong, and all the extra stuff to fuck around with just because it's interesting. But it doesn't really lose that much, this bike, without all the extra stuff, because the, the changes to the gearbox they've done over the previous model, the whole bike feels way more refined and smoother. The, the last bike was raw, very raw, and that's a good thing, don't get me wrong, it's a good thing. This bike, is it's had the, the edges taken off a little bit. Now this is in its obviously standard non-upgraded mode so we'll see what those extra parts do to it but it's actually it feels just generally way more sort of comfortable and um more touring i feel like i could definitely do a trip on this now whereas the last one to be fair i had modified it quite a lot but it just felt a little bit harsh and a little bit rampant and if you if you weren't going flat out then it was just a bit pointless whereas this with the cruise control and all that sort of extra comfort I don't think it really misses that much 
from not having those extra parts that you need or you should want to buy he's right in the bush that guy that you may want to buy from KTM so don't worry if your budget can't extend to put all the extra stuff on it bloody hell there's been some rain here it's washed all the the banks down the wanks down wanks brown brown wanks long shanks whatever oh howdy howdy doodly peedly poo I want to masturbate on top of you cover you in fluids and drench your eyes then lie you down and sing lullabies until you're blue in the face and your lips have gone cold and the last masturbation story was told you sat on your bed with a Kleenex wipe and fell off backwards into a bowl of tripe which is actually the stomach lining of a cow <laughs> moving on then from some of the comparisons to the old bike which I'm sure I'll kind of flick back and forth on obviously we've got this TFT dash which is very nice to look at it does a thing where thank you I'll wave then bitch it does constantly flick between daylight night mode day mode so you can see it obviously that's one of the main problems with an LCD dash is sunlight and no light you know in the if you're going through a dark tunnel you don't want it to be so super bright it blinds you or if you're riding at night this is constant glowing thing in your face overall I prefer this one I'm happy with this one uh, let's go this way uh, I know you can't see it very well because it's got a handily placed GoPro covering the speedometer but generally it's kind of easier to read and the menu becomes much nicer to navigate and that was one of the criticisms I had of the older bike even though it's fairly straightforward it was a little bit uh, 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 I don't know what to do this is a bit clearer however I do think they've made a bit of a poor job of the sort of the, the UI the, the GUI is it GUI G, G anyway the user interface the design of it just doesn't quite don't know it doesn't quite float my boat and I don't know why they keep pushing this blue at the moment KTM is black and orange if they made the whole thing black and orange or white and orange it would be a bit better the blue is just a random thing and this is me being a designy tart but then you know I've worked in the design industry for 20 years so I notice I pick up on these things but yeah dash overall very good again KTM say they've They've, they've made the riding position a little more sporty from the old one. Personally, I don't really feel it or see it at all. Uh, I did have different bars on my bike, so maybe that's why. I think it's over 1300cc now, this bike, even though it's called a 1290. And it is a thumping V-twin. That is the heart of this bike. Well, that was certainly the heart of the last one. This has now got all that power and torque and loveliness, but it's just a little more refined. So yeah, you don't really get, for such a premium bike, which this definitely feels more premium than the, lo than the older one, um, it's a shame you don't get better forks. They're fine, they're absolutely fine, but I don't think there's any preload adjustment on them. It's just compression and rebound, which is a little bit stingy. However, like all of this shit I'm waffling on about, basically, <laughs> if you open the garage door, and see what you want and what turns you on it doesn't matter what some dickhead on the internet thinks it really doesn't matter you know nobody really makes a shit bike these days like out of the top manufacturers they're all good they're all just different flavors of what you want to ride and it's as simple as that and personally i prefer this this is the flavor i've chosen if i didn't have my other bikes i may have chosen differently but i do yeah, you know, th that's what makes this world a wonderful place with the, the mix of the variety of the human race. People want different stuff, don't they? Otherwise, everyone will be after the same girlfriend, same house, same job, same motorbike. And it would just be boring. I could definitely do some touring on this. I think I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm There's a dash look flicked. There you go. Um, I'm, I'm going to. I'm gonna, do you reckon I can make it to the Alps? Get some Krieger luggage on the back. Sorted. And just go back roads all the way. Because the, the thing that kills this bike is the motorway. But it kills, for me, it kills every naked bike. Ciao. Bella, 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 bella. Oh, that is a beard and a half. Whee! Anyway, let's 
take this shit. The other thing I've noticed which is different about this, so I bought the, the dongle, and the dongle is the thing that allows you to keep the mode set in what you left it at before you turn the bike off. Because it does do this rather irritating thing where uh, you keep, if you, for example, if you prefer riding with ABS off, you have to keep going into it every time you start the bike and turning it off. Um, so they, they made a dongle which eradicates that, which I had on the last bike. Um, but the difficulty is, there's, there's now this, I don't know what it is, there's an extra sort of electrical, wiry, sort of ecu -E abs -E big box under the seat. So there's hardly any room there. The old one had a lot more room, so you could just attach the dongle to that, whereas this, no no chance, no chance at all. So I don't know what to do about that. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. all you need is love. Da -da 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 -da. All you need is love, love, and a wanking glove. Someone's dropped a toolkit. I just like this bike for its excitement on the road. I think the Tuono is faster, probably. Um, the S1000RR may be quicker in a straight line, but this, for me, has got the excitement, it's got the noise, it's got the thumping twin, naked, aggression to it which is slightly lower speed thrills than on a superbike and yeah very happy i think i might have to buy an orange suit to match it but that's another thing isn't it Heck, that's quite a good topic actually matchy matchy What a dick. <laughs>